Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Westfield, New Jersey, and I'm changing out a eight circuit sub panel for a 30 circuit sub panel. The reason why we're doing this is we need to make room for some new air conditioning equipment circuits. One's gonna be an air handler, which will be running up to the attic from the basement through the plumbing vent stack, which is semi-routine for this house, built in the late 50s, 1960s, I think. And uh, then we're also gonna be running a new circuit from the main breaker panel for the air conditioning and condensing unit. And the reason why we're doing that is because the main breaker is a 200 amp panel. And since we have an inductive load, the air conditioning circuit is an inductive load. When that starts, it draws four to six times the amount of current it uses once it gets going. So we wanna come out of the main breaker panel so we don't inadvertently overload the sub panel uh, main disconnect circuit breaker for the panel. So welcome back to the channel, let's get started. Okay, so here's the panel in question. Obviously it comes off this 208 main breaker. It's an old Murray panel, 1984. When they remodeled the kitchen, they put in this main lug only panel uh, for the kitchen circuit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and put in a 30 circuit panel so that it can reinstall the eight circuits that were in this panel. And then we'll have room for the new air handler circuit and two more circuits that we're gonna relocate from the main breaker panel. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's the panel in question. Obviously it comes off this 208 main breaker. It's an old Murray panel. Not my favorite, but I asked them about upgrading the service. They didn't want to do it. 1984, looks like. 12484 or 89. Was the panel upgraded there? Anyhow. When they remodeled the kitchen, they put in this main lug only panel uh, for the kitchen circuit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and put in a 30 circuit panel so that it can reinstall the eight circuits that were in this panel. And then we'll have room for the new air handler circuit and two more circuits that we're gonna relocate from the main breaker panel. So let's get to it. So the original scope of work just called for me to upgrade this electrical panel because the HVAC company in that was going to be installing a new three-ton condensing unit and air handler needed the electrical capacity. So I just assumed that the HVAC contractor had his own electrician. But as I was working here, I found out that I was going to be the electrician, which is fine because uh, it's additional work. You're doing the sub-panel, you're doing the wiring for the air conditioning unit, and you're definitely making a safe installation for a family to have air conditioning this summer uh, without doing these electrical upgrades it would be impossible to have delivered these two new circuits um, safely so what we're going to do is we're going to put the air handler which is a 240 volt air handler there aren't many of them that are 240 volts anymore but this one is and we're going to be installing the air handler inside the sub panel and the condensing unit wiring uh, in the main breaker panel because that's an inductive load and that draws a lot of electrical power. So that's why we're putting that in the uh, 200 amp main breaker panel right to my right. Siemens is a nice product, obviously, with the copper bus, main lug, neutral. We'll remove this bonding screw. The ground terminals come already assembled in there. It's actually a really, really nice panel. So the plan on this particular install was to install this Siemens panel because I had all Siemens GFCI and arc fault circuit breakers in the previous panel. So instead of adding new arc fault circuit breakers and GFCI circuit breakers, which would add several hundreds of dollars to this uh, install, 
I decided to use the same panel manufacturer and I just reused those circuit breakers. The air handler circuit or circuit breaker, the overcurrent protective device, does not need to be arc fault or GFCI protected, but in the coming editions of the National Electric Code, you can expect that change uh, and expect to have your uh, air conditioning electrical equipment, GFCI and or AFCI protected. I believe there's one manufacturer that's slowing up the National Electric Code from enforcing that code of having the GFCI protected because they can't get their shit together uh, to release something that won't trip a GFCI. That's what I've been told. And if you don't believe that, that's fine. You could leave a message in the comments down below. Uh, but I got that from a very trusted source, someone close in the New Jersey Electrical Contractors, um, uh, the board of uh, the board of examiners. Uh, that's where the word came down from. I'm not going to mention any names here, but these people know who they are, and they probably know who I'm talking about. Um, so uh, I, I believe that's the truth, that there's a manufacturer that just can't manufacture a condensing unit that won't trip a GFCI, which is, if you ask me, pathetic. Because what does a GFCI does? A GFCI senses balance, or an it senses an imbalance of current on both the hot and neutral conductors. So it monitors them. And if there's as much as four to six milliamps of difference in potential between those two conductors, the current transformer located inside the GFCI device, whether it's a circuit breaker or a GFCI receptacle, there's a current transformer that senses the balance of the, the current and makes sure if it's not balanced that it trips at between four to six milliamps. So I'm not making that up. Those are all facts. So you would say, well, gee, so if there's got some current leakage going on, in your condensing unit, what kind of product are you making? And those are my thoughts exactly. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. So anyway, uh, so I reused all the circuits, obviously put them back almost exactly the way they were in the previous panel, just to make it simpler to label it. I left every circuit on the left-hand side of the panel, the existing ones, and um, <clears throat> reused the arc fault and the GFCI breakers, and even left these tabs on there. So whoever installed this did a nice job, but if you notice in the previous panel, before I took it out, there was no, um, none, of the, uh, none of the feeders uh, supplying power to this panel were identified. The neutral and the equipment grounding conductor should have been marked or identified as white and green as you see them here now. I've already done that. Uh, I think if you look earlier on the video, it was missing that because I had to add that. Uh, otherwise, everything in the workman like was fantastic, I thought. I guess the guy that installed this ran out of tape that day or couldn't identify the conductors, which was kind of spotty. And you know an electrician did this because he's got an undersized equipment grounding conductor uh, that's allowed for um, a 70 amp feeder. I think you would have to use a number eight uh, copper ground uh, equipment grounding conductor for this installation without looking at uh, table 250 TAC 122. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It's almost over. Let me know what you think in the comments. And um, as always, thanks for watching this video. And the video will be over in a couple minutes. Uh, thank you for 20,000 subscribers. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so you did miss a few things here. I did end up finishing up the sub panel. The battery went dead. Sorry about that, guys. Then I cleaned up, went out for lunch, picked up some materials, and now I'm back. So the scope of work has actually changed here. So I was originally here to upgrade the sub panel so that I would have room inside my main breaker panel here. I added this double pole 30, but it turns out it's a double pole 20 since I got information on the unit. on the unit so when you're sizing air conditioning and condensing units you always go by the nameplate data and so there's two keys that we need to look at when we're sizing our air conditioning circuit or condensing unit circuit we need to look at the minimum circuit opacity and the maximum overcurrent protective device 
on this one i don't know i have to refer back to the picture that they sent me on a text but i do know that the minimum circuit ampacity is 18.9 so while i'm here i was hired to do the condensing unit and the air handler so that's what we're working on there will be a part two of this video series here once the air conditioning equipment is in place we'll go back and wire it up and i'll show you how i do that in the next video